Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C dot com, on the internet. Give me your Bitcoin. Go to the website, get the Bitcoin address, give me your Bitcoin. I mean, it's not real money anyway, right? It's not like Federal Reserve notes that actually have value. It, this is just Bitcoin. It doesn't mean anything. Here's another thing about chicks. Girls. I mean, I get that girls are flaky, but you know what I hate about the whole... I, I like the texting, and it's useful to you know send a message and say, hey, you want to go do something, whatever. But you know what drives me nuts is when you text them, and because women all, of course, value honesty, but they're total cowards. They'll never just text you back and say, Hey, look, I'm really not interested in having sex with you. Just fuck off and die and don't bother me anymore. So you'll text them, and you never hear from them. And the thing is, you never know. It's like, okay, did I send her the text, and she just doesn't want my dick? Or did she drop her cell phone in the fucking toilet again? Because first of all, don't, don't, whatever you do, don't like text a chick over and 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 over that's that's wrong I send a chick three text messages and if there's no response after three messages then that's when I stop and that's not doesn't mean three messages in an hour or three messages in a day that's like three messages over a month you send a text you don't get a response you wait like two weeks you send another text, you don't get a response. You wait like two weeks, you send another one, no response, and it's cut off. You stop right there. Because most likely, she's not interested in you, but of course, because women value honesty so much, she doesn't have the spinal column to actually say that. You have to figure it out. But the thing is, because I know girls, and it's like, my God, how can you drop your cell phones in the toilet that often? Like this one girl that I was hanging out with is the best I can describe it with. You know, she's like, yeah, I dropped my phone in the water again. That's why I didn't respond. It's like, oh, fuck, I roll. Then this other chick I'm out with, she's like completely sober, goes in the bathroom. It's like seven days go by. Or it wasn't seven days. It's like 20 minutes. Finally, she shows up. She's like, yeah, I dropped my cell phone in the toilet. I had to fish it out. I'm like, why does it take 20 fucking minutes to get your phone out of the toilet? But anyway... It's like, this is a, some kind of fucking woman thing, is dropping the cell phone in the toilet. And why did you take, oh, I know why you took your cell phone to the bathroom, because you have to take your fucking selfie in the mirror all the goddamn time, because you're so starved for attention and so desperately in need of validation. But anyhow, it's just like, so you never know. It's like you send a text, you don't get a response. Okay, is she really just flaky or not interested or whatever you want to say? Or did she drop her fucking cell phone in the toilet again? That's why the rule, I, the rule I've come up with is what I just outlined. You send a message. No response. You wait two weeks. You send a message. No response. You wait two weeks. You send a message. Because she may have dropped her cell phone in the toilet, but you know, no, no woman, no female in the year 2014 is going to go four weeks without a fucking cell phone. Guarantee you there's no way they could function for more than four days without a cell phone. So this way, by spreading it out, unless she just drops the cell phone you know, in the water just at the same time you happen to text each time, then she might miss all three messages. But if you space them out, she's going to get at least one of the messages, and if she's, even, if she's interested, she's going to get back to you. It has nothing to do with anarchy. Let's talk about, I'm going to read a little passage here from this book. I talked about this in the previous edition of Anarchy Moment. It's the book, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big, by Scott Adams, the man who writes the Dilbert comic strip. This book is incredibly insightful. It's a great read and incredibly insightful. This is page 96. 
95. And this is chapter 20, Managing Your Odds for Success. And we'll get to anarchy here in a second. It's coming. There's actually going to be some anarcho-capitalism in this episode of Anarchy Moment. Scott Adams writes, The primary purpose of schools is to prepare kids for success in adulthood. That's why it seems odd to me that schools don't have required courses on these systems and practices of successful people. Success isn't magic. It's generally the product of picking a good system and following it until luck finds you. Unfortunately, schools barely have the resources to teach basic coursework. Students are on their own to figure out the best systems for success. If we can't count on schools to teach kids the system of success, how will people learn those important skills? I'm trying to decide if I want to read the rest of this paragraph, if it's relevant or not. It is kind of. Okay, let me continue reading. If we can't count on the schools to teach kids the systems of success, how will people learn those important skills? The children of successful people probably learn by observation and parental coaching, but most people are not born to highly successful parents. The average kid spends almost no time around highly successful people, and certainly not during the workday when those successful people are applying their methods. The young are intentionally isolate, insulated from the adult world of work. At best, kids see the television and movie versions of how to succeed, and that isn't much help. This is interesting because, as I said, this book is really good, really worth reading. But, of course, like any person, Scott Adams makes some mistakes. And his first mistake, of course, occurs right here at the beginning of this paragraph. The primary purpose of schools is to prepare kids for success in adulthood. Well, no, it's not. And how somebody who is as smart as Scott Adams can believe that is a great indicator of how incredibly good the state is at propaganda. No, the purpose of schools is not to prepare children for success. If schools were designed to prepare children for success, then children would be succeeding. As I and lots of other people have said before, the purpose of public schools is to condition people to work in factories. The purpose of colleges is to condition people to work in cubicles. Schools are not there to prepare anyone for success. Because, of course, success is anathema to the state. If people were capable of being successful on their own, they would not need the state. And I'm going to explore this in some more depth in an upcoming edition of Stating the Obvious, which I'm working on notes for, and might have already happened already had my computer not fucking crashed. Again, which is why you don't hear the clock going today, because I'm in a different room, because the computer is still recovering data, still recovering files from the crashed file system. And I, I could be in the room with the computer doing this, where I normally record, but I'm so fucking pissed off at the computer and dealing with the problem that I, just, I don't even want to be around it. So I fucking throw the thing out the window or some shit. That's why I'm recording in a different room. The state is so good at its propaganda that it can actually convince someone as smart as Scott Adams, because this is a great book. Read this book. He's, he's a smart guy. He's got some fantastic observations. He's done some amazing things other than just writing Dilbert. He's very successful. And yet he, for some reason, believes that... The purpose of public education is to prepare people for success. This is one of the things that always baffles me about business people and 
their inability to comprehend the state. And this is something I want to do an extended discussion about in the future. So let me give you what may or may not be a short version of this. If you own a business and let's say you hire Alice and you hire Alice to write a database program to manage your inventory. And Alice says, yep, I can write a database program and it'll take me about three months. And you say, okay, great, I'm going to pay you $1,000 and you're going to write, $1,000 is not enough, but I'm just using round numbers, of course. People are, oh, patriarchy, you'd only pay Alice $1,000, but Bob would get $10,000. Oh, patriarchy. You're going to pay Alice $1,000. She's going to write a database program to manage your inventory. It'll be done in three months. So you go to Alice in three months and you say, here's your $1,000. Where's my database program? She gives you a database program at work, so everything's great. If she, but if she doesn't have a database program, she goes, oh, you know, I haven't actually written one yet and I don't actually know how to write a database program and I've basically just been playing computer games. You would look at this and say, hmm, all right, you're, you're fired. You did not deliver as promised. I'm getting rid of you. You can't do the job you said you were going to do. Even I want to say even the stupidest person out there can see how that works. Although there actually are some people out there who probably would just say patriarchy and discrimination. Okay, but let's leave those people aside. Most, I shouldn't say most either, a number of people that I would say somewhere is, is somewhere, well, actually, fuck. When you think about how many people think they're entitled to a job and how many people think they have a right to a job, shit, as I think about this, I realize that maybe what I'm about to talk about isn't that much of a surprise because there are so many of you out there in the parasite class who think that you have a right to a job, that you should have a job even if you can't fucking do the job duties. I can't, I honestly, I can't say that a majority of the people would recognize that in this situation, Alice hasn't delivered what she said she could deliver and therefore she should be fired. Because as I think about it, I guarantee you more than 50% of the people in the United States of America would say that Alice should get to keep her job even though she can't write a database and didn't write the database. Because you people are parasites and you have fucking entitlement mentality. So I kind of blew my point out of the water, so I'm going to have to narrow it down a little bit because I do know a lot of people who own their own businesses. And they are statist. They're just as statist as fuck. So let me rephrase my setup. People who own and run their own business and are investing their own money in it, if they hired Alice to write this database and three months later Alice didn't have a database and admitted she didn't know how to write a database, they would fire her. However, when the state comes along, there's something about the hypnotic propaganda powers of the state that completely nullifies these same people's ability to recognize bullshit. The state comes along and says, we will provide public education that will make your children smarter. And then the children go to public education and they come out stupid. And nobody looks at this and says, hmm, the state said they were going to educate the children and we gave them a bunch of money and they failed. The state should be fired. 
Instead, these very same people who would fire Alice look at the stupid children and say, wow, the state needs more money. I mean, look at this. Scott Adams writes, unfortunately, schools barely have the resources to teach basic coursework. How many fucking resources do you need to teach math? How many resources do you need to teach writing? Scott Adams has written here an entire book about success and how to achieve it. And he's saying that schools can't teach success because they just don't have the resources. Well, his book is actually pretty fucking good, except for this bullshit right here on page 95. Why don't the schools buy a copy of Scott Adams' book. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than the textbooks. And then have the students read it. It's not that fucking hard. But the state is completely failing at what Scott Adams believes is the purpose of public education when he says right here, the primary purpose of schools is to prepare kids for success in adulthood. No, it's not. It's not. That is not the primary purpose of schools. The primary purpose of schools is to indoctrinate children with stupidity, to make them compliant, to make them obedient, to make them understand that other people own their bodies. That's why they have to raise their hand to go take a piss. It's to keep them out of the workforce when they're young so they don't compete with the old people and so they don't learn any actual useful skills. And if Scott Adams were as smart as he thinks he is, naturally he doesn't, he outright admits that he's not as smart as, that's the wrong way to phrase it. He outright admits, you know, he doesn't think he knows everything and that a lot of the things in his book aren't going to work and a lot of things may or may not be true, but as he, he essentially says, I'm throwing a lot of stuff against the wall. Some of it's going to stick, take what works, leaves the rest, which is another great thing about this book and why I am so highly recommending it, even though I'm not even finished reading it yet, because I'm about halfway through. And it's, other again, other than page 95, it's pretty fucking brilliant. Even Scott Adams, as smart as he is, is not capable of seeing through this bullshit of the state. Yet, if Scott Adams hired Alice to write a database for him, and Alice didn't write the database, and then three months later said, I don't know how to write a database, Scott Adams would fire her. Yet, Scott Adams believes the schools are supposed to be preparing children for success in adulthood. And, of course, as he states, the schools are not preparing children for success in adulthood. And so, does he fire the schools? Does he reject the state? Does he suggest the state should have less money? No, of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Why? Because without the state, why, who would build the roads? Who would educate the children? Who would murder brown people in Afghanistan with flying robots? People believe the state educates children, yet the children don't get educated, and people say, well, we need more state. We need to spend more money. People believe that the police prevent crimes, yet crimes happen. Wow, we need more police. We need more state. We need to spend more money. If this were an employee-employer relationship, it would be recognized as failure and incompetence, and Alice would be fired. But because it's a state-to-slave relationship, which is all the more funnier because the slaves in this country actually believe they're in charge. They believe the, the myth of democracy, right? The government works for the people. It's hilarious. These slaves actually believe they're the masters. And at the same time, when the true masters completely fail to deliver what's been promised, the slaves make excuses for the masters and give the masters more money. This is the power of the state to baffle 
and to dazzle the slaves with the pure glitter of bullshit that completely obscures their vision, that convinces the slaves they are the masters.